This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Gemma Blythe. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Paradiso. Canto 17 to 21. Paradiso. Canto 17. As came to Clymene, to be made certain of that which he had heard against himself, he who makes fathers cherry still to children. Even such was I, and such was I perceived by Beatrice, and by the holy light, that first on my account had changed its place. Therefore my lady said to me, Send forth the flame of thy desire, so that it issue imprinted well with the internal stamp. Not that our knowledge may be greater made by speech of thine, but to accustom thee to tell thy thirst, that we may give thee drink. O my beloved tree, that so doth lift thee, that even as minds terrestrial perceive, no triangle containeth too obtuse. So thou beholdest the contingent things, ere in themselves they are, fixing thine eyes upon the point in which all times are present. While I was with Virgilus conjoined upon the mountain that the souls doth heal, and when descending into the dead world, was spoken to me of my future life some grievous words, although I feel myself in sooth for square against the blows of chance, on this account my wish would be content to hear what fortune is approaching me, because foreseen an arrow comes more slowly. Thus did I say unto that selfsame light, that unto me had spoken before, and even as Beatrice willed, was my own will confessed. Not in vague phrase in which the foolish folk ensnared themselves of old, ere yet was slain the Lamb of God who taketh sins away, but with clear words and unambiguous language responded that paternal love, hidden revealed by its own proper smile, contingency that outside of the volume of your materiality extends not is all depicted in the eternal aspect necessity however thence it takes not except as from the eye in which tis mirrored a ship that with the current down descends from thence e'en as there cometh to the ear sweet harmony from an organ comes in sight to me the time that is preparing for thee as forth from Athens went Hippolytus, by reason of his stepdame false and cruel, so thou from Florence must perforce depart. Already this is willed, and this is sought for, and soon it shall be done by him who thinks it, for every day the Christ is bought and sold. The blame shall follow the offended party in outcry as is usual, but the vengeance shall witness to the truth that doth dispense it. Thou shalt abandon everything, beloved, most tenderly. And this the arrow is which first the bow of banishment shoots forth. Thou shalt have proof how savoureth of salt the bread of others, and how hot a road the going down and up another stairs. And that which most shall weigh upon thy shoulders will be the bad and foolish company with which into this valley thou shalt fall. For all in great, all mad and impious, for they be come against thee. But soon after they, and not thou, shall have the forehead scarlet. Of their bestiality their own proceedings shall furnish proof. So twill be well for thee, a party to have made thee by thyself. Thine earliest refuge and thine earliest inn shall be the mighty Lombard's courtesy, who on the ladder bears the holy bird who such benign regard shall I have for thee that twixt you twain in doing and in asking that shall be first which is with others last with him shalt thou see one who at his birth has by this star of strength been so impressed that notable shall his achievements be not yet the people are aware of him through his young age since only nine years yet around about him have these wheels revolved but ere the Gascon cheat the noble Henry, some sparkles of his virtue shall appear in caring not for silver nor for toil. So recognized shall his magnificence become hereafter. 
that his enemies will not have power to keep mute tongues about it. On him rely, and on his benefits. By him shall many people be transformed, changing condition rich and mendicant, and written in thy mind thou hence shall bear of him, but shalt not say it, and things said he incredible to those who shall be present. Then added, Son, these are the commentaries on which was said to thee, Behold the snares that are concealed behind few revolutions. Yet should I not thy neighbors thou shouldst envy, because thy life into the future reaches beyond the punishment of their perfidies. When thy silence showed that sainted soul that it had finished putting in the woof into that web which I had given it warped, began I, even as he who yearneth after, being in doubt, some counsel from a person who seeth and uprightly wills and loves. Well, see I, father mine, how spurreth on the time towards me such a blow to deal me, as heaviest is to him who most gives way. Therefore with foresight it is well I arm me, that if the dearest place be taken from me, I may not lose the others by my songs. Down through the world of infinite bitterness, and o'er the mountains from which beauteous summit the eyes of my own lady lifted me, and afterward, through heaven from light to light, I have learned that which, if I tell again, will be a savior of strong herbs to many, and if I am a timid friend to truth, I fear lest I may lose my life with those who will hereafter call this time the olden, the light in which was smiling my own treasure, which there I had discovered, flashed at first as in the sunshine doth a golden mirror, then made reply, a conscience, overcast or with its own or with another's shame, will taste forsooth the tautness of thy word, but ne'ertheless all falsehood laid aside, make manifest thy vision utterly, and let them scratch wherever is the itch. For if thine utterance shall offensive be at the first taste, a vital nutriment, will leave thereafter when it is digested. This cry of thine shall do as doth the wind, which smiteth most the most exalted summits, and that is no slight argument of honor. Therefore are shown to thee within these wheels, upon the mount and in the dolorous valley, only the souls that unto fame are known, because the spirit of the hearer rests not, nor doth confirm its faith by an example which has the root of it unknown and hidden, or other reason that is not apparent. Paradiso, Canto 18 Now was alone rejoicing in its word, that soul beatified, and I was tasting my own the bitter tempering with the sweet, and the lady who to God was leading me said, Change thy thought, consider that I am near unto him who every wrong disburdens. Under the loving accents of my comfort I turned me round, and then what love I saw within those holy eyes I here relinquish, not only that my language I distrust, but that my mind cannot return so far above itself unless another guide it. Thus much upon that point can I repeat, that her again beholding my affection from every other longing was released while the eternal pleasure which direct rayed upon Beatrice from her fair face contented me with its reflected aspect, conquering me with the radiance of a smile, she said to me, Turn thee about and listen, not in my eyes alone is paradise. Even as sometimes here do we behold the affection in the look, if it be such that all the soul is wrapped away by it. So by the flaming of the Elphigen's holy to which I turned, I recognized therein the wish of speaking to me somewhat farther, and it began. In this fifth resting place, upon the tree that liveth by its summit, and ah, bears fruit, and never loses leaf, are blessed spirits that below, ere yet they came to heaven, were of such renown that every muse therewith would affluent be. Therefore look thou upon the cross's horns. He whom I now shall name will there enact what doth within a cloud its own swift fire. I saw athwart 
the cross, the splendor drawn by naming Joshua, even as he did it, nor noted I the word before the deed. And at the name of the great Maccabee, I saw another move itself revolving, and gladness was the whip unto that top. Likewise for Charlemagne and for Orlando, two of them I regard attentive followed, as followeth the eye its falcon flying. William thereafterward, and Renaud, and the Duke Godfrey, did attract my sight upon the cross, and Robert Giscard, then moved and mingled with the other lights, the soul that had addressed me, showed how great an artist was among the heavenly singers. To my right side I turned myself around, my duty to behold in Beatrice, either by words or gesture signified, and so translucent I beheld her eyes, so full of pleasure, that her countenance surpassed its other and its latest want. And as by feeling greater delectation, a man in doing good from day to day becomes aware his virtue is increasing, so I became aware that my gyration with heaven together had increased its arc, that miracle beholding more adorned, and such as is the change in little lapse of time in a pale woman when her face is from the load of bashfulness unladen. Such was it in mine eyes when I had turned, caused by the whiteness of the temperate star, the sixth which to itself had gathered me. Within that jovial torch did I behold the sparkling of the love, which was therein delineate our language to mine eyes. And even as birds are risen from the shore, as in congratulation o'er their food, make squadrons of themselves, now round, now long, so from within those lights the holy creatures sang flying to and fro, and in their figures made of themselves, now D, now I, now L. First singing they came to their own music moved, then one becoming of these characters. A little while they rested and were silent. O divine Pegasi, thou who genius doth glorious make and render it long-lived, and this through thee the cities and the kingdoms. Allume me with thyself, that I may bring their figures out as I have them conceived, apparent by thy power in these brief verses. Themselves then they displayed in five times seven vowels and consonants, and I observe the parts as they seem spoken unto me. Diligat justium. These were first verb and noun of all that was depicted. Qui jituricus terum were the last. Thereafter, in the M of the fifth word, remained they so arranged that Jupiter seemed to be silver there with gold inlaid. And other lights I saw descend where was the summit of the M, and pause there singing the good, I think, that draws themselves to itself. Then, as in striking upon burning logs, upward there fly innumerable sparks, whence fools are wont to look for auguries. More than a thousand lights seem thence to rise, and to ascend some more, and others less, even as the sun that lights them had allotted. And each one being quiet in its place, the head and neck beheld eye of an eagle, delineated by that inlaid fire. He who there paints has none to be his guide, but himself guides, and is from him remembered that virtue which is form unto the nest. The other beatitude, that contented seemed at first to bloom a lily on the M, by a slight motion followed out the imprint. O oh, gentle star, what and how many gems did demonstrate to me, that all our justice effect is of that heaven which thou ingemnest. Wherefore I pray the mind, in which begin thy motion and thy virtue, to regard whence comes the smoke that vitiates thy rays, so that a second time is now be wroth, with buying and with selling in the temple, whose walls were built with signs and martyrdoms, O soldiery of heaven whom I contemplate, implore for those who are upon the earth, all gone astray after the bad example. Once twas the custom to make war with swords, but now it is made by taking here and there the bread the pitying father shuts from none. 
Yet thou, who writest but to counsel, think that Peter and that Paul, who for this vineyard which thou art spoiling died, are still alive. Well, canst thou say, so steadfast, my desire, is unto him who will to live alone, and for a dance was led to martyrdom, that I know not the fisherman, nor Paul. Better do so. Canto 19. Appeared before me with its wings outspread, the beautiful image that in sweet fruition made jubilant the interwoven souls. Appeared a little ruby each, wherein ray of the sun was burning so enkindled that each into mine eyes refracted it. And what it now behooves me to retrace, nor voice has e'er reported, nor ink written, nor was by fantasy e'er comprehended. For speak I saw, and likewise heard, the beak and utter with its voice both I and my, when in conception it was we and our, and it began, being just and merciful, am I exalted here unto that glory which cannot be exceeded by desire, and upon earth I left my memory such that the evil-minded people there commend it, but continue not the story. So doth a single eat from many embers make itself felt, even as from many loves issued a single sound from out that image. Whence I thereafter, O perpetual flowers of the eternal joy, that only one make me perceive your odors manifold, exhaling, break within me the great vast, which a long season has in hunger held me, not finding for it any food on earth. Well do I know that if in heaven its mirror, justice divine, another realm doth make, yours apprehends it not through any veil. You know how I attentively address me to listen, and you know what is the doubt that is in me so very old a fast, even as a falcon issuing from his hood doth move his head and with his wings applaud him, showing desire and making himself fine. Saw I become that standard, which of lauds was interwoven of the grace divine, with such songs as he knows who there rejoices. Then it began. He who a compass turned on the world's outer verge, and who within it devised so much occult and manifest, could not the impress of his power so make on all the universe, as that his word should not remain in infinite excess. And this makes certain that the first proud being, who was the paragon of every creature, by not awaiting light, fell immature. And hence appears it that each minor nature is scant receptacle unto that good which has no end and by itself is measured. In consequence, our vision, which perforce must be some ray of that intelligence with which all things whatever are replete, cannot in its own nature be so potent that it shall not its origin discern far beyond that which is apparent to it. Therefore into the justice, sempiternal, the power of vision that your world receives as I into the ocean penetrates, which though it see the bottom near the shore, upon the deep perceives it not, and yet tis there, but it is hidden by the depth. There is no light but comes from the serene that never is o'ercast. Nay, it is darkness, or shadow of the flesh, or else it's poison. Amply to thee is open now the cavern, which has concealed from thee the living justice, of which thou mattst such frequent questioning. For saidest thou, born a man is on the shore of Indus, and is none who there can speak of Christ, nor who can read, nor who can write. And all his inclinations and his actions are good, so far as human reason sees, without a sin in life or in discourse. He dieth unbaptized and without faith. Where is this justice that condemneth him? Where is his fault, if he do not believe? Now who art thou that on the bench would sit in judgment at a thousand miles away, with the short vision of a single span. Truly to him who with me subtilizes, if so the scripture were not over you, 
for doubting there were a marvellous occasion. O oh, animals terrene, O oh, stolid minds, the primal will that in itself is good, ne'er from itself the good supreme has moved. So much is just as in accordant with it, no good created draws it to itself, but it by raying forth occasions that. Even as above her nest goes circling round the stalk, when she has fed her little ones, and he who has been fed looks up at her. So lifted I my brows, and even such became the blessed image, which its wings were moving, by so many counsels urged, circling around it sang, and said, As are my notes to thee, who dost not comprehend them, such is the eternal judgment to you mortals. Those lucent splendors of the Holy Spirit grew quiet then, but still within the standard that made the Romans reverend to the world. It recommenced, Unto this kingdom never ascended one who had not faith in Christ, before or since he to the tree was nailed. But look thou, many crying, Ah, Christ, Christ, who at the judgment shall be far less near to him than some shall be who knew not Christ. Such Christians shall the Ethiop condemn, when the two companies shall be divided, the one for ever rich, the other poor. What to your kings may not the Persians say, when they that volume opened shall behold, in which are written down all their dispraises, there shall be seen among the deeds of Albert, that which ere long shall set the pen in motion, for which the realm of Prague shall be deserted. There shall be seen the woe that on the sin he brings by falsifying of the coin, who by the blow of a wild boar shall die. There shall be seen the bride that causes thirst, which makes the Scot and Englishmen so mad that they within their boundaries cannot rest. Be seen the luxury and effeminate life of him of Spain and the Bohemian, who valour never knew and never wished be seen the cripple of jerusalem his goodness represented by an eye while the reverse in m shall represent be seen the avarice and poltroonery of him who guards the island of the fire wherein anchises finished his long life and to declare how pitiful he is shall be his record in contracted letters which shall make note of much in little space and shall appear to each one the foul deeds of uncle and of brother, who a nation so famous have dishonoured, and two crowns. And he of Portugal, and he of Norway, shall there be known, and he of Rosca too, who saw in evil hour the coin of Venice. O oh, happy Hungary, if she let herself be wronged, no father. And Navarre, the happy, if with the hills that gird her she be armed, and each one may believe that now, as Hansel thereof, do Nicotia and Famagosta lament and rage because of their own beast, who from the other's flank departeth not. When he who all the world illuminates out of our hemisphere so far descends, that on all sides the daylight is consumed. The heaven, that erst by him alone was kindled, doth suddenly reveal itself again by many lights, wherein in one resplendent. And came into my mind this act of heaven, when the ensign of the world and of its leaders had silent in the blessed beak become, because those living luminaries all so far more luminous did songs begin lapsing and falling from my memory? O oh, gentle love, that with a smile doth cloak thee, How ardent in those sparks didst thou appear, That had the breath alone of holy thoughts. After the precious and pellicid crystals, With which begemmed the sixth light, I beheld silence imposed on the angelic bells, I seem to hear the murmuring of a river that clear descendeth down from rock to rock, showing the affluence of its mountain top, and as the sound upon the cithern's neck, taken 
its form, and as upon the vent of rustic pipe the wind that enters it. Even thus, relieved from the delay of waiting, that murmuring of the eagle mounted up along its neck, as if it had been hollow. There it became a voice, and issued thence from out its beak, in such a form of words, as the heart waited for wherein I wrote them. The part in me which sees and bears the sun in mortal eagles, it began to me, now fixedly must needs be looked upon. For of the fires of which I make my figure, those whence the eye doth sparkle in my head, of all their orders the supremest are. He who is shining in the midst as pupil was once the singer of the Holy Spirit who bore the ark from city unto city. Now knoweth he the merit of his song, in so far as effect of his own counsel, by the reward which is commensurate. Of five that make a circle for my brow, he that approacheth nearest to my beak, did the poor widow for her son console. Now knoweth he how dearly it doth cost, not following Christ, by the experience of this sweet life and of its opposite. He who comes next in the circumference of which I speak, upon its highest arc, did death postpone by penitence sincere. Now knoweth he that the eternal judgment suffers no change, albeit worthy prayer maketh below to-morrow of to-day. The next who follows with the laws and me, under the good intent that bore bad fruit, became a Greek by seeding to the pastor. Now knoweth he how all the ill deduced from his good action is not harmful to him, although the world thereby may be destroyed, and he, whom in the downward arc thou seest, Guglielmo was, whom the own same land deplores, that weepeth Charles and Frederick yet alive. Now knoweth he how heaven enamoured is with the a just king, and in the outward show of his effulgence. He reveals it still. Who would believe down in the errant world that ere the Trojan Rufus in this round could be the fifth one of the holy lights? Now knoweth he enough of what the world has not the power to see of grace divine, although his sight may not discern the bottom, like as a lark that in the air expatiates, first singing and then silent with content, of the last sweetness that doth satisfy her. Such seemed to me the image of the imprint of the eternal pleasure, by whose will doth everything become the thing it is. And notwithstanding, to my doubt, I was as glass is to the color that invests it, to wait the time in silence it endured not, but forth from my mouth. What things are these, extorted from the force of its own weight? whereas I saw great joy of coruscation. Thereafterward, with eyes still more enkindled, the blessed standard made to me reply to keep me not in wonderment suspended. I see that thou believest in these things, because I say them, but thou seest not how, so that, although believed in, they are hidden. Thou doest as he doth, who a thing by name well apprehendeth, but its quiddity cannot perceive unless another show it. Regnum colorum suffereth violence from fervent love and from that living hope that overcometh the divine volition. Not in the guise that man overcometh man, but conquers it because it will be conquered, and conquered conquers by veniety. The first life of the eyebrow and the fifth caused the astonishment, because with them, Thou seest the region of the angels painted, that pass not from their bodies, as thou thinkest, Gentiles, but Christians in the steadfast faith of feet, that were to suffer, and had suffered, for one from hell, where no one e'er turns back unto good will, returned upon his bones, and that of living hope was the reward, of living hope that placed its efficacy in prayers to God, made to resuscitate him so that twere possible to move his will. The glorious soul concerning which I speak, returning to the flesh, where brief its day, believed in him who had the power to aid it, and in believing, 
kindled to such fire of genuine love that at the second death worthy it was to come unto this joy the other one through grace that from so deep a fountain wells that never hath the eye of any creature reached its primal wave set all his love below on righteousness wherefore from grace to grace did god unclose his eye to our redemption yet to be whence he believed therein and suffered not from that day forth the stench of paganism and he reproved therefore the folk perverse those maidens three whom at the right hand wheel thou didst behold were unto him for baptism more than a thousand years before baptizing o thou predestination how remote thy root is from the aspect of all those who the first cause did not behold entire and you o mortals hold yourselves restrained in judging for ourselves who look on god we do not know as yet all the elect and sweet to us is such deprivation because our good in this good is made perfect that whatsoever god wills we also will after this manner by that shape divine to make clear in me my short-sightedness was given to me a pleasant medicine and as a good singer a good lutenist accompanies with vibrations of the chords whereby more pleasantness the song acquires so while it spake do i remember me that i beheld both of those blessed lights even as the winking of the eyes concords moving unto the words their little flames paradiso canto twenty one already on my lady's face mine eyes again were fastened and with these my mind and from all other purpose was withdrawn and she smiled not but if i were to smile she unto me began thou wouldst become like semele where she was turned to ashes because my beauty that along the stairs of the eternal palace more enkindles as thou hast seen the farther we ascend if it were tempered not is so resplendent that all thy mortal power in its effulgence would seem a leaflet like the thunder crushes we are uplifted to the seventh splendor that underneath the burning lion's breast now radiates downward mingled with his power fix in direction of thine eyes the mind and make of them a mirror for the figure that in this mirror shall appear to thee he who could know what were the pastorage my sight had in that blessed countenance when i transferred me to another care would recognize how grateful was to me obedience unto my celestial escort by counterposing one side with the other within the crystal which around the world revolving bears the name of its dear leader under whom every wickedness lay dead colored like gold on which the sunshine gleams a stairway i beheld to such a height uplifted that mine eyes pursued it not likewise beheld i down the steps descending so many splendors that i thought each light that in the heaven appears was there diffused and as accordant with their natural custom the rooks together at the break of day bestir themselves to warm their feathers gold then some of them fly off without return others come back to where they started from and others wheeling round still keep at home such fashion it appeared to me was there within the sparkling that together came as soon as on a certain step it struck and that which nearest unto us remained came so clear that in my thought i said will i perceive the love thou showest me but she from whom i wait the how and when of speech and silence standeth still whence i against desire do well if i ask not she thereupon who saw my silentness in the sight of him who seeth everything said unto me let loose thy warm desire and i began no merit of my own renders me worthy of response from thee and for her sake who granteth me the asking thou blessed life that doth remain concealed in thy beatitude 
make known to me the cause which draweth thee so near my side, and tell me why is silent in this wheel the dulcet symphony of paradise that through the rest below sounds so devoutly. Thou hast thy hearing mortal as thy sight. If answer made to me, they sing not here for the same cause that Beatrice has not smiled. Thus far adown the holy stairway steps have I descended, but to give thee welcome with words and with the light that mantles me. Nor did more love cause me to be more ready, for love as much and more up there is burning as doth the flaming manifest to thee. But the high charity that makes us servants prompts to the council which controls the world allotteth here, even as thou dost observe. I see full well, said I, O sacred lamp, how love unfettered in this court sufficeth to follow the eternal providence. But this is what seems odd for me to see. Wherefore, predestinate, wast thou alone unto this office from among thy consorts? No sooner had I come to the last word than of its middle made a light of center, whirling itself about like a swift millstone. When answer made the love that was therein, on me directed is the light divine, piercing through this in which I am embosomed, of which the virtue with my sight conjoined lifts me above myself so far I see the supreme essence from which this is drawn. Hence comes the joyfulness with which I flame, for to my sight, as far as it is clear, the clearness of the flame I equal make. But that soul in the heaven which is most pure, that seraph, which his eye on God most fixes, could this demand of thine not satisfy? Because so deeply sinks in the abyss of the eternal statute what thou askest, from all created sight it is cut off. And to the mortal world, when thou returnest, this carry back, that it may not presume longer toward such a goal to move its feet. The mind that shineth here on earth doth smoke. From this observe, how can it do below that which it cannot through the heaven assume it? Such limit did its words prescribe to me. The question I relinquished and restricted myself to ask it humbly who it was. Between two shores of Italy rise cliffs, but not far distant from thy native place. So high the thunders far below them sound, and form a ridge that Catria is called, neath which is consecrate a hermitage, wont to be dedicate to worship only. Thus unto me the third speech recommenced, and then continuing it said, There un unto God's service I become so steadfast, that feeding only on the juice of olives, lightly I passed away the heats and frosts, contented in my thoughts contemplative. That cloister used to render to these heavens abundantly, and now is empty grown, so that perforce it seemed must be revealed. I in that place was Peter Damiano, and Peter the sinner was I in the house of Our Lady on the Adriatic shore. Little of mortal life remained to me when I was called and dragged forth to the hat, which shifteth evermore from bad to worse. Came Cephas, and the mighty vessel came of the Holy Spirit, meagre and barefooted, taking the food of any hostelry. Now some one to support them on each side, the modern shepherds need, and some to lead them. So heavy are they, and to hold their trains. They cover up their palfreys with their cloaks, so that two beasts go underneath one skin. O oh, patience, that dost tolerate so much! At this voice saw I many little flames from step to step, descending and revolving, and every revolution made them fairer. Round about this one came they and stood still, and a cry uttered of so loud a sound it here could find no parallel, nor I distinguished it. The thunder so overcame me. End of Paradiso, Canto 17 to 21. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain.